Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Levin, and I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Get to Know. And I am so excited about today's interview because personally, I have become a huge fan of our guest. John Foley has spent nearly a decade now sharing practical and inspirational messages on high performance, and John does this all around the world. The former, get this, lead solo pilot for the famed Blue Angels is among the most sought after speakers in the world now. John is also the founder of Glad to Be Here, which is a mindset that enables higher performance. You know, research shows that embracing a positive mindset and doing it as a core belief really improves communication and it inspires commitment. Glad to be here also offers a purpose greater than oneself, focusing individuals and teams on why they do what they do. Why am I actually doing something and why does it even matter? The glad to be here mindset helps answer these critical questions. And joining us now is John Foley himself from uh, Sun Valley, Idaho. And uh, that is a beautiful part of this country. I can't wait to get out there. John, I got to ask you, I'm so yep. glad to have you here today. I have to ask you the first question uh, and take as long as you want. But something everyone's going to want to know, how does one become the lead soloist on the Blue Angels? It takes a long time leading up to that, correct? Yeah, yeah, it does. I'm going to start when I was 12 years old. I was a little boy, and I, my dad took me to an air show. I'll never forget this day, Scott. I'm looking up in the sky. I see these six magnificent blue jets, and, and something hit me in the heart, and I said, Dad, I'm going to do that. So from a dream of a 12-year-old boy, it took me 18 years before I got the shot, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, it was a path that was like anybody else out there. A lot of obstacles. I got rejected three times for the Naval Academy. They said I was not physically qualified. I just didn't give up. Uh, but the bottom line is you, um, you start flying jets off aircraft carriers. So I was in the Navy fighter pilot flying jets off aircraft carriers. After that tour, uh, I went to the instructor ranks, had the privilege to fly in the movie Top Gun. You know, you probably saw that. Uh, and then after the, being an instructor pilot, that's where I got picked up to be a Blue Angel. So tell everybody, John, I mean, when you're a uh, soloist on the Blue Angels, you know, you're as close as 18 inches going over 500 miles. I know you say you can actually see the cracked paint on the yeah. uh, planes next to you. Um, tell us, where did you actually grow up and a little bit about your family and how yeah. you were raised? Beautiful. So I was actually born in Germany. My dad was an army officer and an engineer. Uh, so we moved around a lot. Uh, I grew up a lot on the East Coast, right up in your area. I, I lived in Troy, you know, up. Uh, my dad went to RPI. I lived in West Point. I, uh, he was an instructor there for four years. So as a little kid, I got to grow up there uh, a lot in Springfield, Virginia, uh, Florida, California, Texas. We moved around a lot, New Mexico. I went to high school in California uh, and then I joined the Navy. So moved around another. I probably lived over uh, 28 places now. Now you are really into precision things, obviously, because that's what your, what your life has been about, especially with the Blue Angels. You logged on here right at the exact moment you were supposed to log on for our interview, which is amazing. Did you know that you were into precision and things like that? When did you see that in your life as a youngster? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I will say that um, I always loved pushing the limits, you know, and I think I saw that even as a little boy. My mom told me a story once that um, the garbage man came over real quick and saying, you know, quick, come quick, your your son's in trouble. And so she's, you know, she's nervous. She runs out there. And I'm, I, was, I think, three or four years old at the time. And uh, I'm hanging upside down on the monkey bars, you know. And she goes, oh, that's that's him. He, that's just what he likes to do. So I think <laughs> the idea of of uh, being inverted, by the way, when I, when you're elite solo, the Blue Angels, you fly upside down a lot. I love doing that stuff. Uh, but I think the idea of really less about precision and more about just pushing your limits. What's possible? You know, how do you go beyond what you've already done? And to me, that really started in sports. I love playing sports, you know, played football at the Naval Academy, um, flying jets off aircraft carriers. Every day you're strapping in that cockpit. You're, you're, you're challenging yourself, right? And then when you get to the Blue Angels, it takes it to a whole new level. Mm. I mean, 300% um, improvement. 
uh, over what I'd done in the past. So I think that was always in my blood. But mm. I will say this. You got to be smart because it's easy to kill yourself. All right. It's easy to be stupid out there. It's easy to be, you know, not not smart. So there's that there's that razor's edge. And I like being on the razor's edge. Now, obviously, you do. Um, you know, as, as a Blue Angel, you are an ambassador of sorts of goodwill and you're there to inspire. There's no doubt about that. I mean, a lot of folks have uh, been able to go and watch them. It's amazing to me. I would be so afraid and you are into overcoming fear. I mean, you are the pilot, the solo pilot on a, on, of the Blue Angels out there. The precision, you, you know, you're beating death. You know you have great partners with you that are in these yeah. other jets. Um, you say you're scared, but you're not afraid, right? Correct. I think that's a great distinction. And when I, when I say that, uh, what I'm talking about is this. And by the way, we all know that fear is rampant out there right now. And it's, it's you know, that's the real enemy. It, it's not a virus or some other things. It's fear, right? So how do you overcome fear? And it's with a technique that I like to use, and that is that I'm scared all the time, okay? To me, scared when the little hairs stand up on the back of your neck. Scared's being awareness. Scared says, let's take some precautions. Let's be careful, right? But fear is different right? Fear causes a stuckness. So I guess what I'm trying to share with you is that I'm aware of the situation. If there's something challenging, I'll train for it, uh, but I'm never going to shy away, okay? Uh, I can be scared and I'll, I'll push through it uh, with being smart. So um, being scared is okay. I just don't like fear. Now, uh, I got to ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, when you're out there with these other men, what is it about and women by the way we've got women on the blue angels no that is phenomenal i did not know yeah. that so there has they have broken the gender barrier then so that's amazing when did the first woman come on well they were actually on the team women were on the team when i was on the team but in a supportive role okay uh maintenance uh public affairs that kind of thing mm -hmm. and now women now fly in combat you all know that that's yep. uh that was a change. And so, yes, we've had women on the team since, I think, 2008. I'm only guessing. You'd have to check it out uh, uh, in as as pilots and NFOs and uh, C-130 pilot. And we had our number eight was a woman. And, and that's a beautiful thing, you know. Uh, but back to your question, uh, when you're that close to somebody else, and by the way, you have to know how they think and how they feel, not just how they perform. You're a team. Man, you're just one. It all comes together. You know, six of us flew in formation. That's what the Delta, that's when we're all there. Four of the, those are the diamond pilots. Two are the solo pilots. And uh, the solos, we call ourselves the maximum performance demonstrators. That's where you come at each other at 1,000 miles per hour, closer, miss within a wingspan. We do all the heavy Gs, and then we get together and we fly these beautiful uh, uh, Delta maneuvers, which are the aerobatic loops and rolls and and precision. So what does it take to be that elite team? Everyone wants to know, you know, yeah. whether you're at work, at the office, or you have your own business, what does it take to be that elite team? To separate yourself, it's great to be at the top, but, you know, only the cream of the cream become in the Hall of Fame, as you like to talk about. Yeah, well, it's first, you have to have a purpose, and that purpose must be larger than self. I don't care if it's in sports, if it's a business, if it's in life, uh, if you want an elite team, there has to be a purpose larger than self. And so you said it earlier with the Blue Angels, we're, we call ourselves ambassadors of goodwill and we're there to inspire, to inspire greatness in another individual. You know, when I go to the crowd line and I'd hold the little kids in my arms and sign autographs, it wasn't about me, it was about them. You know, can you put a hopes and dreams in someone else's life? And I didn't care what they did. You know, I didn't care if they became an announcer like you, you know, a beautiful, you know, successful person. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Just, you know, just try, push the limit. And that there's other three things, too. You got to you got to commit. You got to align and you got to connect. And actually, like hmm. I'll revert, connect, align, commit. Right. So I've noticed this because I've had the privilege to speak to over a thousand uh, high performance organizations now around the world. They do this, you know, for decades. Uh, and I'll always see those three things. You'll see people that are connected, they're aligned, and they're committed. Those are the three qualities. And that's the same thing on the Blue Angels as it is in the oh, yeah. mom and pop gas station or, or store, right? Absolutely. That's what makes it beautiful is 
the, the same fundamentals that are really the same. Now we take it to an extreme level, right. but you have to be good with the fundamentals. And I'll give you the other thing too, is you have to, you have to care, right? See a culture of excellence also is a culture of caring mm. and you need both of those. You know, and, and I look at it in my daily life. I have a co-anchor, Mary Alice, who we've become number one in Buffalo, and it's because of exactly what you mentioned. If I look back at the 23 years we've been doing this, uh, you don't just become number, number one in the region without that because you work as a team. So I need to ask you, when you talk about your teammates, um, yeah. you like to talk about you want to know how they're going to perform uh, when things go bad, not when things are easy and good. It's like when I'm sitting next to my partner here on the anchor desk, it's when there's real severe breaking news that really impacts the viewer's life. That's what you talk about. Your partners, the men and women, when you're flying, you want to know how they're going to react when things go tough. Exactly. Well, and it's even today, you know, I like to say, how do you react under turbulence, right? Turbulence in our life, turbulence, you know, uh, out there in the world. See, that's what I want to know. And I want to know what's in your heart, not just your head. And so we try to find that out in the selection process, right? Uh, and then we build the chemistry and, and the, the teamwork comes together. It's on a daily basis. Uh, it starts with trust, and by the way, you have to earn trust. You earn trust every single day and small things matter, right? So it's, it's like Mother Teresa had a famous quote. She says, put your faith in the, in the small things because that's where your strength comes from. So you'll notice on high performance teams, the little things matter. We're constantly looking for improvement, just any little improvement we can make. So I love when you say little things matter because I have thought about that my whole life also. I have said that exact thing. And for the person that's watching this, whether it's their home life, their marriage, or whether it's the store that they work in, they need to know that it's the little details that all add up and those little things just in our daily life, whether you're a Blue Angel pilot or a regular civilian, those little daily things do matter. Yeah. I'll give you the secret, though. As, as you were talking, uh, I thought that if there's one thing uh, that is the differentiator, it's on my shirt. It's what it's glad to be here. OK, it's living a life of positivity, of gratefulness and gratitude. Uh, when you have that as the ethos of the way you see the world, it'll change the way you see the world and it'll change the way the world sees you. That's the biggest game changer. So that is the crux of what I wanted to get to leading up to this interview is to talk about glad to be here and this is your company glad to be here uh, tell the folks at home what glad to be here is all about because John you're a sought-after speaker you speak all over the world you you do it for Google Mercedes-Benz uh, all of these huge corporations and you do it for smaller companies as well tell us what the crux is about glad to be here and that sense of gratitude that you have yeah. So to me, glad to be here is an ethos. It's a way of being. It's um, it's how you bring operational excellence and positivity and gratitude together. See, when when you do this, you you have breakthrough performance, both in your personal life and in, the, in any business uh, around the world. Like you said, I've spoken to 52 countries now over a million people. Right. Uh, hundreds of thousands of leaders. So my uh, one of the missions at, at Glad to Be Here is to inspire over a billion people. Uh, to live a glad to be here life. And here's the beautiful thing. You get to define what that means. OK, uh, what does it mean to you to be fulfilled, to have purpose, to be um, grateful and inspiring to others? Uh, that's what we do. Yeah, to you, it's really a message. I want to think of uh, teamwork uh, and leading through change as well. Let's talk about the current environment that we find ourselves in now uh, with the COVID uh, and leading through change. Um, you know firsthand what it's like to lead through change and taking high performance to, a, to an extreme right now. To the folks that are having to lead right now, whether it's their household, um, an elementary school, or a big corporation, this is a very challenging time for all. Yeah, and, and the first thing when you talk about leading through change, it's different than adapting to change, okay? You know, adapting is a reaction. Right. So I like to talk about what's where's the gap between the stimulus and the response. So it's in that gap that we get to make choices. 
right? We get to actually identify um, how we're going to approach a situation. So the biggest thing that, that I'm seeing right now today, you know, I've had to reinvent my entire business. I mean, like a lot of people out there. I mean, uh, in the March, we had 22 events just uh, uh, cancel right away mm -hmm. that day. Um, and we had to say, wow, well, there's no more live events. How does a speaker like myself who, you know, speaks in front of thousands of people, uh, and now we're doing it virtually. We're doing exactly what you and I are doing here. Um, we've found that we've actually found that uh, you're able to impact even more people and go deeper. There's some really positive things. So I guess the, the key is, do you see change as a threat or an opportunity? Right. Because they're both right. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely both right. So the question is, what do you see? And then if you want to choose to see it as an opportunity, mm. you have to be smart, you know? And, and so I've got an actual framework that I, I take people through to, uh, to allow them to achieve those goals. I love that, John. That, that is really uh, well, well said. And I know you have that great glad to be here mindset. Let's talk about just a couple more questions. I know your time is valuable, then I'll let you go. Uh, your daily regimen. You say ah. a daily regimen is very important, right? Yeah, so I, I wake up, I think it's absolutely critical. How you wake up uh, is, is how you're gonna spend the rest of your day. So I have a routine and it starts with uh, a, my glad to be here wake up. I, I do this every morning, I'll share it real quick. I, I hope everybody who's listening to this tries it. Uh, I, I've trained my brain to wake up happy. And the way you do that is with a gratitude practice. So the minute that my eyes open up, I've trained my brain to, to think about, well, what am I grateful for? And I, I do it in the present moment. Today was easy. You know, I hear I'm in some valley. I'm with my wife. It's just it was beautiful. Uh, the next thought that hit my head was you. I said, you know, later on in the evening, I get the rare privilege to be with Scott and his team and the people out there. Uh, and I just said, wow, that's a privilege. Um, and I just go through what I'm feeling that day. Then here's the trick, though. Go back to yesterday. Go back 24 hours mm -hmm. and say, what happened yesterday that I have something to be grateful for? Uh, for me, I had a chance to speak to over 10,000 people on this Zoom call, right? And I just said, wow, that was a great opportunity. You know, I actually remember people's faces, not just what I did, but people faces. And then this is really critical because this is going to set your day. You plant seeds in your day. I then go forward in my day. And I'm doing this all while I'm laying in bed, by the way. And I go forward and I say, what's going to happen today? How can I actually help someone else? I think about others, not just myself. I do that every morning and you can do it quickly. And that'll change the uh, the way your brain works, the way your neurons wire, and you'll have you'll be happier in your life. And that's just the start. And then the other thing that I do is I, I have a movement routine. I do uh, exercise. I actually stand on my head, invert myself every single morning. Reminds but you of flying days right <laughs> it does. Well, well also it changes your energy by the way right, right? and you can do this just in bed putting your feet up but so i have a physical practice i have a mental practice i have a right. gratitude practice i love to do meditation but I, I and i try to read i try to grow so I, my new mantra is give learn grow because i think giving is the first step be generous learn every day and then grow and share it with somebody else that's amazing and finally i want to ask you uh about what's over your left shoulder it's uh, called mm -hmm. fearless success tell the folks about the book fearless success and what they can expect if they read it and want to give it for christmas or easter or whenever they want to give it as a president present or just read themselves yeah, well, well, thank you. That that was a manuscript that took me 10 years to write. I went through four different manuscripts, but Fearless Success is about the mindset and process of, of greatness, right? And uh, how do you go beyond where you are? So I, I take people through a framework where we talk about your beliefs. We talk about focus, alignment, trust, teamwork, but it really is a journey of, of my life and, and how to make that uh, real in someone else's life. And gratitude and generosity are, are kind of the key point. You also see my helmet back there, right? That's my Blue Angel gold helmet. And uh, I tell stories about going to Russia, Moscow, and, and how that helmet represents a culture of excellence. That so, is amazing. Uh, well, we are so glad to have you here today, John. You're an amazing man with a great career and great future. And we appreciate everything today. And thanks for being here on Get to Know. And I can't wait to read Fearless Success this Christmas time. I really appreciate your time today. And uh, thanks again for all your help, John. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. I was glad to be here.